I'm just out in the car. <laughs> I'm just out in the car. Okay. The guys are inside working. I see. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. I just lost Benji there for a while. I think he's going to Yes, call. that's what I noticed. He's uh, oh, brother. Good morning, everybody. Sorry, I was having trouble with the audio, but I've got y'all up now. Okay. Uh, All right. Morning, Fish. Morning, how are you? Yeah, good, good. Where are you but, headed? Um, well, I'm in Atlanta as we speak. Still on the project. We'll be here for another week plus at least. Probably another two weeks. Okay. Um, it's good to see you. Yes, same here. Same here. Hi, Miss Barbara. Hi, Joanna. Yeah, yeah, Eddie. How are you doing, Brad? Morning. Good, good. Morning. My Benji. Hi, yeah. Benji. How y'all doing? Sorry, I kept dropping out. Hey, bro. Good. Yeah. You're back in your office, Benji. Yeah, I was jogging from Mr. Tony's back oh, to the okay. house because my time got away. Okay. <laughs> I drive from the computer, brother. Okay, because good. somehow the TV, I, I think it, um, I don't know, maybe that cable wire or something. It's good, Hans. It looks like you, your connection is very good. Okay. Miss Rita, you'd be proud of me. I made mutton marsala barani last night. Oh, my brother. Oh, my goodness. Really Thumbs good. up. It I cooked something yesterday. I cooked something Go yesterday that is totally strange, totally different to anything you've ever probably eaten. But my brother said that he had not eaten anything like it in 30 something years since he left Guyana. He hadn't eaten it. Oh, nice. It's Absolutely. our bitter melon stuffed with ground beef and cooking a curry sauce. Nice. With Sounds coconut delicious. milk. We call it Kalaungi. Okay. Mm -hmm. But because because you like IPA, maybe one of these days when you come, I'll cook up. <laughs> yeah, that'll work. That'll work. <laughs> that bitter stuff. Yep. I was um I was surprised at how it turned out. I followed the recipe as close as I could, and it um I'm the only one at the house that can eat it though. Uh, my my wife tried it and said it's ridiculously too hot, and to me it was not hot at all. Mm -hmm. My daughter tried it and she got one little piece of meat and then took off running to the sink to wash her mouth because she said it was on fire. But I'm like, guys, it's really not that hot. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Benji, I may need your help this morning. I'll explain in a few minutes. Okay. Uh, good to see you, Baba. Welcome. Well, I'm not seeing you, but I do think that, you, that you're on there. And I do want to take a moment and wish uh, Miss Dolores, Baba's wife, happy birthday. I think this week, Thursday, is her birthday. Also, we're going to meet at the church briefly for um, uh, her Birthday, Bobby. If you can ask her to come th Thursday to Bible study, gonna be briefly on Thursday, and then um, we probably will hold off on Bible study for a while uh, until this COVID stuff is sorted out. You get the television on. You don't get to put the television on. Okay. I haven't seen. Um, how is Brian doing, Joella? He's doing okay. He's on the road. Okay. Uh, remember him in prayer. Uh, Benji, I'm going to ask you to lead us in prayer in a few minutes. Uh, of course, let's thank God. But it's Joella's birthday this month, too. Uh, later in the month. So we're going to observe her birthday on Thursday, too. Because we're not going to meet for the rest of the month. Um, and um, so we want to thank God for that. Rita has a, had an anniversary last Thursday. Sure. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Thanks for that. Um, let's remember in prayer. I talked with Brian briefly. He told me he's getting better, but he still needs uh, us to remember him in prayer. And my brother-in-law, uh, Tyrone, in the in uh, New York, I remember him in prayer also. Uh, where, I, where I need your help, Benji, is um, this week. On Tuesday, I had what they call a TIA, a mini stroke. It lasted, but I think it was about 60 seconds. Rita thinks it's about two minutes, but, um, you know, it, it was it was a pretty frightening. 
Um, I don't think it's a heart, but I think it might have to do with the brain. <laughs> you, I know you wouldn't disagree with that, Benji. <laughs> <laughs> it may, uh, I don't know, but um, whatever it is, uh, uh, I have an appointment with a cardiologist uh, at Wake Med, and remember that situation in prayer. Is there any other prayer requests or anything that anybody has? Praise report on Alexis's friend that was put on the ventilator. She's actually improved significantly, and my understanding is she is off the ventilator now. She's still in Charlotte, but she's improving dramatically. Thank well, God, thank God yes. for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and Mary, it's good just to have you on the call today. Now next week, I think you're up for preaching, right? Yes. Okay, we 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 be listening for that. And by the way, um, I need the zip code for John Hood. I have the letter to mail and the address, but I don't have his uh, zip code. I have to look it up. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, he's not living in the same place when Gloria was alive, was it? Yes, he's still living there. I have a different address. That's Hood Farm Road. Uh, he can still get mail there. That's what I told you. So the zippy we have there would work. The same zip code? You could send it to the same address if you want. Okay. All right. He's I still, do have that address. Go All right. over there and get, pick up his mail. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Is there any other prayer requests or praise report? Remember Kobe, the, the mm -hmm. child that is in the hospital going through um, mm -hmm. diagnosis for the cancer. I have a praise uh, report. My, my nephew is out of the hospital. He's walking with the walker. Thank God. On, doing his classes online already. Mm. He's a college, in college. This is his second year of college. Mm. He won't be able to play basketball this year. But we thank God for his life. Thank God for your prayers. Yeah, thank, thank well, you. thank God for what he's That's doing. That's good. Yep. How is the other one, Miss Mary, that was in the accident? Kenny? Kenyon is still having trouble with his, his, his pelvic uh, on one side. Other side healed well, one side didn't heal well, but he's still doing therapy and he's doing well. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. Uh, we're gonna, if there's no, is there any other prayer requests or praise report? If not, I'm gonna ask Benji to pray and then Dr. Ken will um, share his meditation. Let's bow our heads and hearts together if we would. Lord, we come before you just as humbly as we possibly know how. Yes. We bow before your throne and your grace, your magnificence and your wonder. God, we thank you for where you moved in every one of these requests already. God, we thank you for the improvements that we've seen in our friends and our family. God, we thank you knowing that you are in all things and through all things. You can do anything imaginable. And God, right now, we just humbly ask you right now for all the requests, the ones that we keep tied up in our heart that we won't even whisper out loud for fear that someone else will hear them. God, I ask you to move in each one of those right now in a very special and a mighty way. God, I ask you to be with each person who hears this message today and this meditation to let our minds and our hearts be open to receive what you're willing to pour into us if we would just be ready and willing to take it. God, I ask you to be with all of us in what's going on in our lives, those that are sick, dear God, those that are facing adversity, God, whenever the enemy is attacking in all the ways that he's trying to attack the families and the individuals, God, we ask you to be that stronghold, that high tower, that fortress, that rock that we can hide in and that we could batter the storm, dear God, knowing that you are the one that we're standing behind. And that while it seems like the storm is raging, you are still shielding us from it in the midst of all that's going on. God, I ask you, if you would, again, please help us today to understand you better, to love you more, and to grow closer to you by the meditations and the messages that we're going to hear. And we give you the praise, the honor, and the glory for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Benji. Uh, Dr. Ken, over to you. Thank you, Rocco. Morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, bro. Today, I want to explore the difference between the ego and yourself. Um, 
People, different people use the term self differently. Um, in my, in the context I'm using it, I mean your soul, your spirit, your innermost being, your God being. Perhaps it would be easier for me to talk about the self and then go on to talk about the ego. Now I want you to close your eyes and block out the rest of the world for just a few minutes. Believe me, your wallets, we are in Zoom meeting, we're not close to each other. So your wallets and your purses are quite safe. Close your eyes, please, and go deeply within yourself. Breathe deeply, relax completely. Breathe deeply. Now feel your energy that keeps your body alive from head to toe, from toe to head. Head to toe, toe to head. That is the energy that keeps your body alive. Feel it, head to toe, toe to head. Open your eyes now. Look around you. Your wallets and your purses are still there, right? Now that is, to me, is your soul, your spirit. That is what you share with everybody else are with all the living things around you. Uh, the world, we live in a world of energy and information. And we just, within our bodies, are that localized, we have a localized body of energy and information that is part of the wider field. We are part of it. This energy creates a bond with everything else in the world and with everybody else. Now, I spent the whole week... I spent, I spent a few minutes the whole week preparing for this five-minute meditation, believe it or not. And I go back and forth to Dwarf and, and Barbara and some other people, Benji sometimes. I prepared this meditation on Tuesday. And then I went to deliver three books which a friend of mine bought for me. And on his wall of his office was posted a sheet with the word Namaste. On Tuesday, I prepared this meditation with the spirit itself. I went there, I saw Namaste. Namaste is a is in Hindi, it means soul or spirit. And it goes like this. And think of the energy in your body, which you share with other people, or with animals, the whole world around you. You greet somebody else in, the, in this culture by folding your hand and say, by saying Namaste. It means my soul honors your soul. I honor the place in you where the entire universe resides. I honor the light, love, truth, beauty, and peace within you because it is also within me. In sharing these things, we are united. We are one. We are the same. And that's the end of that uh, explanation of Namaste. Now, the ego is quite different. The ego is your sense of self-importance, that you are separate and distinct from everybody else. It is our beliefs that our personality, our talents and abilities, and we are in constant competition with others. Many people mistake the ego for themselves. Somebody asked me who I am. Oh, I'm Ken Ramfer, I graduated with PhD, I wrote so many books. That's the ego. Ekbar Tolle, the writer of The Power of Now, and I'll quote him quite often. He says that the ego is a false sense of self. Uh, Tolle says that the ego, like all living things and mechanisms around us, wants to survive. I will create all kinds of drama in a relationship with others and an environment in order to survive. 
If there's any conflict, the ego kicks in. I have to be right. The self, on the other hand, realizes that instead of being separate, we are a part of everything around us. Now, how do we get rid of the ego? And I, I have problem doing that. Um, as most of you know me by now and you realize that's true. I know it's Benji laughing. Uh, we do it a little bit at a time. It's like a big tree, you know, you cut off little branches at a time. We spend years building up our egos, living inside them and reinforcing them. Recognizing our genuine selves will take more than a few days. Learn to recognize when you're smitten with your sense of self-importance. And whenever this happens, take a few minutes, moments, go deeply within yourself as you did at the beginning of this meditation and recognize the energy body within you. Please don't be discouraged if you cannot feel this energy strongly at first. It will become stronger as you do it very often. Eventually, you'll gradually realize that you are sharing the same energy with all living things. This feeling of sharing will gradually overshadow the ego a little bit at a time and strengthen your soul strengthen the sense of yourself. Um, if I am a bit vague and I'm a bit rambling about this, it's because I'm now beginning to understand it myself. Every day I'm struggling with my ego and I'm reminding myself of the energy body within me that is part of the energy field all around us. I want you to thank you for letting me share and God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Ken. And um, at the end of the service, I'm going to ask uh, Benji to wrap up, uh, um, probably. But let me make a few quick comments. In Christian terms, in biblical terms, the ego is described when Satan said, I will rise up. I'd be like God. I will have power. That's the ego. Uh, when Eve, when the devil told Eve, you eat this fruit, it will make you wise. It will make you like God. That's when our ego comes in. And that's when our ego tempts us to rebel against God and to do the things that are not of God. Jesus, on the other hand, destroys the ego. Uh, or Paul. Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. The ego, uh, yet not I, not yet not the ego, but Christ lives in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. It is Christ in us, the hope of glory. Benji, before I hand over to you, um, bro uh, Brother Ken is doing his preaching today, but um, I'm glad to see Zephaniah. Zephaniah sent me a nice email about the condition of everything that's happening in Kenya with a uh, I think he told me that one third of the uh, congregation. Go ahead, uh, Seth. It's good to see you, my brother. Take a moment and bring us a quick update, and then Benji, and then Ken will do his sermon after that. Yeah, you're still muted, Seth. Yes, go ahead. Yes, uh, we the, the 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 government opened the churches for us now. They are allowing one third of the total congregation. Uh, so if you are 90, they allow 30 to meet in person. So that is the position right now, although there is now again a spike uh, or, or in, in the COVID cases, it had gone down a bit. But now it is at, uh, about the last night they announced 16%. Uh, so we just have to be more careful. Uh, and, as, and as I told you, me and my family, the entire family were able to get the first Job of AstraZeneca, Zeneca, a vaccine. So we are going to get the last one on uh, 27th of October. But I thank God that in spite of the scarcity of the vaccine in Kenya, uh, all my family members, except one small girl who is in school, in a boarding school, 
the rest of us were here in Kakamaga were able to get the vaccine. So we thank God so much for that. And and uh, and back to you now. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you. Benji. Yes, um, Dr. Kim's meditation, I, I didn't know where he was going, but it's it's rather, again, I won't say coincidental, it's a God thing, that it's along the same lines as some of the things I've thought about this week. Um, and I came across a proverb, and uh, Reverend Zephaniah, if I said this wrong or I was misinformed, I will apologize. But I was, I came across this while I was reading, it said it was a Kenyan proverb, one must feel one's head before emptying one's mouth. And that's what I was thinking about this week. And when Dr. Ken was talking about that inside thing, that innermost part of you, we talked about the heart last week. It goes hand in hand with it. And he talks about the things that are going on around us and how we are affected by it and through it and how we affect it. There's nothing more biblical than what he said. If you go back and read your Bible, it's in the still small voice that God's heard. It's when you quiet yourself. It was not the raging storm. It was not in the earthquake. All these things on the outside that were going on, it was the still small voice is where God was speaking and God was calling the prophet. In our own lives, we and our egos. Killing the ego is like trying to cut down a redwood tree with a spoon. You're never going to do it. You can't do it on your own. Yes, you can prune the tree. Yes, you may put some damage on the tree. But if we take the time to stop and do as those first century apostles and disciples did to meditate, think about the word. Let us dwell on what it's saying to us on the inside and how that word affects the innermost part of us. That portion, Dr. Ken said that God part, mm. that's biblical because we're made, shaped, and formed in the image of God. Man. I, I do I do thank everyone for, for letting me share. I, and I'm sorry I kind of went on that DR, but it was just, it, it was on me to share that, that we yeah. meditate and we think on those things. Thank you. Thank you. With that, with that we're going to hand over to Brother Ken. Yeah. Um, thank you, Brother. Are you all able to hear me? Yeah, yes. but we can see you. Very clear. Well, <laughs> because I'm reading, I'm reading the scriptures from my phone as well. Okay. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll go back to picture after I get there. Um, we, our reading will be from the book of Hebrews, beginning from um, Hebrews chapter 11. We're going to be reading from verses 1 to 13. Okay. 1 through 13. Hebrews. 11, 1 through 13. Do you want somebody to read it? Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the words were framed by the word of God. So that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gift, and by it being dead, yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. By faith, Noah, 
being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he confessed the world, or condemned, sorry, the world, and became here of the righteousness which is by faith. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should have to receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out, not knowing whither or where he went. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith, also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed, and was delivered of a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even of one, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. I want to draw our attention this morning that the faith being applied by every individual bears different results. God himself showed that what he willed and chose by speaking it, it came into being, came about. And in one of the verses where it said, by faith, without faith, it is not possible. It's impossible to please God. Because we're not earth dwellers only, but even now, as we are dwelling on the earth, we are citizens of heaven. As Jesus came preaching, not the kingdom of Israel, but the kingdom of heaven, and he said, it was at hand. It was already here. Why? Because he came to fulfill the will of the Father in bringing many sons to salvation by his own death, his own blood being shed. We see where Abel had his sacrifice accepted over his brother's sacrifice. And it declared him to be righteous simply by the gift that God accepted because he was simply acting on the will of God. By faith we see Enoch was translated. Something different happening but simply by the same application, faith. So Enoch was translated, never saw the physical death here, but saw his change take place, like what will happen to us at the rapture of the saints. Then we see, as it said, it's impossible in verse 6 to please him without faith. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Every child of God being given the privilege of having God's nature has a transfer of authority in the will of God to see things happen that we cannot presently visualized with our natural eyes. Because when God spoke the things of creation into place, they never existed before. So too, 
when we live by faith, the will of God is being produced. The work of Christ is being carried out simply because we trust God to keep his word, to do exactly what he wills and what he has promised. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out of his own place where he was well secure, well comfortable with his family, with his possessions and all these things, God simply said to him, leave and come and see a place that I want to give to you. He didn't know where he was going, never been there before. And by faith, he sojourned in that land of promise as a strange country, dwelling just in tents, not in big fancy houses with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs of the promise that was given to him. Because he forsook the city, but he sought a city that God promised him. And God was the one who was laying the foundation, and God was the one who was building it. In the book of Revelations, we hear John proclaiming, And I, John, saw the holy city Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God as a bride adorned. And so this is what Abraham was looking for. A city with foundations and buildings. And God was the builder and maker. Through faith, Sarah herself received strength and conceived seed. And was delivered of a child when she was yet past age of bearing, naturally. Because she accepted God as a promise keeper. Therefore sprang even of one, and of him that was good as dead, many children like the stars of heaven, like the sand on the seashore, innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received from the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. If we are too connected to the earth life, we lose out on the life of the future, that which is eternal. Just think about it. So many things earthly we desired that many of us have not received and may never receive. But we have promises of God concerning a city who God is making with his own hands, with his own desires, with his own plans, perfect in everything about it. And he is a word keeper. When he gave Abraham his promises, he never relied on Abraham to clap hands, so to speak. To say in agreement. When we agree on something. We shake hands on the agreement. God allowed Abraham to be asleep. So that. There was no room for doubt. Or anything. In the promise that God was giving to Abraham. He swore by himself. Saying. The same promise. God has sworn by himself. To keep promises to us. Are we seeking what is heavenly over above what is earthly? Earth things are just for a short time. They pass away. Some of the things we desire, we never live to see them accomplish. Many things. Many things we desire now, we will not see them. But yet they will be accomplished if it is the will of God. Because God is faithful. If he promised, he's going to keep his promise. But my encouragement today is that we love not the world nor the things in the world because they pass away. But we seek after the heavenly things, the things that are everlasting, the things that have no changing in them, 
You know, there are many things that have changed. Many, many things. I was looking over something my sister sent me. And everything is less in that interpretation. Everything was less. And I looked at it and I said, there is something missing. Saints today tend to be faithless. Everything they said was less. But I never saw the matter of where it represented Christians. But then I said, you know, I am not strong in faith as I was 20 years ago when I was young in the Lord because I had nothing else to depend on. I never knew as much of the scriptures then as I know now. But I, I had more faith in what little I knew, what little I understood, what little was revealed to me by the Spirit of God. And I don't know if it's the same for the rest of us uh, hearing my message. But my encouragement today is seek the Lord until you find him in his resurrection power, like Paul said. I want to know him and the power of his resurrection, his resurrection life power is what we should seek after. And I think it will change many things in our life. So we strive after mastery. We strive as if we have not yet arrived. I guess when we are green, we're growing. When we are ripe, the only thing can happen to a ripe fruit afterward is that it gets rot. And so I think we continue to be green. Or let us continue to keep growing, keep striving after one thing. The excellency of knowing Christ Jesus, our Lord, in his fullness, resurrection power. The Lord bless. Well, thank you. Benji? That was a wonderful, wonderful explanation of Hebrews and something for us to think about. The promises that God has given to each and every one of us, the things that he's called us to do. And um, I can clearly say that I am in the same boat with you, Brother Ken, because, again, when I was younger, I had nothing. I had to depend on God. And now, as I have grown, is my dependency the same as it was? Probably not. That ego of mine has crept in and said, well, I am doing this, and I am going to do this. And it reminds me of the verse that says, be careful, because if you say you shall go and do this tomorrow, you have no promise of tomorrow. And we need, we need that resurrection power. We need that guidance. Yeah. Because the only way that I will accomplish anything tomorrow is if it's within the will of God and he allows it. Amen. So, so again, Brother Ken, thank you so much for sharing. Are there any, any feedback anyone would like to share on the meditation and the message? If you would, I would please unmute. Like to say, I thank God for the message this morning and the uh, meditation. I was just thinking, I guess I, I, this must have been such a soul week. Benjamin, because I was searching myself this week, and I, and I said the ego that that's what it is. That's what it is that we have to bring on the subjection. You know, so many times you say, "Well, I'm all right." We are never all right. Amen. And I thank you for the faith message this morning, because we all have to walk by faith. And if we don't walk by faith, we're not going to make this journey because we can't see anything. We have to walk by faith and not by sight. I enjoyed the service this morning. Enjoy, enjoyed the word. Thank you both. Amen. Thank you, Miss. Thank you, Miss Mary. Just, uh, let me just add that next week, Mary, one of the architects of New Millennium Ministries, she will be delivering the message next week. Amen. And, look, and looking forward to that. Yeah. Anyone else want to share your comments? If you do, please unmute your mic. I just want to thank both speakers, you know, the messages, the two messages are so connected to me. If we can drop that ego and just have that faith, you know, which I will certainly try to do, we'll be far better um, people and we'll, far, far, we'll be far better Christians. 
um, sometimes that ego, that self, could come in the way of faith. So I just want to thank both speakers for sharing that. Thank you absolutely. for letting me absolutely. Share. Thank you, Miss Barbara. Anyone else? Yes. Yeah, um, when when Dr. Ramphal was speaking earlier. That's um, a good one. A good Dr. Ramphal. The other one. <laughs> I, I realize that um, it's so much that, that happens in the secular world that people are coming to grips with things like with the ego and with the self and the meditation that goes into it. If you want to be able to submit the ego to that which should be the better part. Um, if you go to the scripture and you study the word of God, it's right in there for the Christian to take example and pattern themselves after. And I think of what Philippians 2 verses 5 and 6 says. Um, uh, 2 verses 3 and 4. It says, let, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind. Let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man onto the, on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And if you continuously read that, it will give the example of what Christ was. And um, yes, that ego... Sometimes it's all about me and what satisfies me, what makes me feel good. Not understanding what is going on in somebody else to subject what I am and what I want to by faith, secure strength to help someone else. And it's, it's by faith we're going to be able to do it because honestly, it's hard. It's not easy. And, and Paul struggled with it, and very many Christians struggle with it. And as humans, we are struggling with the same things. But it's only by faith and the strength of God working within us can we conquer and be able to subdue the ego and let the better part of who we are come out. Thank you, Ms. Rita. Uh, my ego is going to kick in, and I'm going to I'm going to give the closing comments. Um, Benji. Go ahead, sir. Ready, anyone else? Brian, it's good to see you. Want to acknowledge Brian? He's the one who has uh, set this up and all of that, and I see him joining us. But he's uh, working. He's probably driving on the road this morning. Oh, I see his name. Oh, yeah, oh. right. Want to acknowledge that? Um, anybody else has anything to say? I, I enjoyed both meditation and message, and it gives us a lot to think about. So thank both yeah. of you gentlemen sincerely. So I'm going to close with a quick story and then a, a, a passage and then a prayer. Um, you know, I told you I had a mini stroke on Tuesday. Wednesday was my anniversary, was our anniversary. I was so stressed about making it to 46 years that uh, I think, think the thought, I thought that part of it might have been... <laughs> The stress. <laughs> he wanted to live one more day. <laughs> but then Benji was quick to remind me that take a full year to make that 46 years. <laughs> right, but pray, pray for me. I, but but uh, this is what I want to close with and, and, and then pray. You know, I shared something on Facebook this week about love, especially for Rita described her more than anything else about love. But I, I couldn't help but comparing that with ego. And so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do a parallel read. This, this was a message Bible talk translates 1 Corinthians 13. And, and thank you, brother, for that, uh, brother Ken, for that message on faith. Because faith looks to God. Ego looks to self, look to, looks to us, look to our sur surrounding, not for the, to the heavenly, but to the earthly. And the, what I pose, it says, love never gives up. To compare that, the ego always gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. The ego cares more about the self than about other people. Love doesn't want does it, what it doesn't have. The ego always wants 
what the neighbor has. <laughs> Love doesn't strut and doesn't have a swell head. The ego always is swell headed <laughs> and struts. Love doesn't force itself on others. The ego always forces itself on others. Love isn't always me first, but the ego is me, I, me, mine. Uh, love doesn't fly off the handle. The ego is very touchy. Love doesn't keep score of the sins of others, but the ego always keeps a tab on the sins of others. Love doesn't, re uh, doesn't revel when others grovel. Ego is happy when other people are suffering. Love takes pleasure in flowering of truth. The ego is disappointed when truth wins out. Love puts up with everything. The ego puts up with nothing. Love trusts God always. The ego never trusts God. It's always me. I trust all, only myself. Love always looks for the best. The ego always looks for the worst. Love never looks back. The ego always looks back. And love keeps going to the end. But the ego always gives up. I just thought that when, when Dr. Ken and, and Brother Ken were sharing, I just thought of that meditation I shared on, um, on, on Facebook from the Message Bible. And I couldn't help but relating those two concepts in my own mm. heart and mind. Amen. Uh, if there's nothing else to be said, is there anything else? I just want to thank God that the privilege we have. Um, I've been able to have devotion every morning at six o'clock with the workmen um, since we started this project. And, you know, it, it's been a blessing. It's been a blessing. Um, one of my, my partner asked for it because he's been, he has started Back, going back to church and all like that. You know, he was back clean for many, many years. And the Lord saw fit to touch him and um, bring him back into fellowship. And he asked for it because he, want, he wanted to understand what the scriptures were saying more. Um, so I just want to thank God for that privilege. Yes. Praise God for that report. Mm. Yeah. Great. All right, let's bow our hearts in prayer. Thank you, Lord, for your word today, your word of faith. Your word that builds faith in us, faith to look to you. Thank you for the meditation that helps us to build faith in you, not to look to ourselves and our surroundings, but to look to you and the grace that you have shed in our hearts. We pray for those in Kenya, oh Lord, that you'd watch over them and yeah. protect, protect Brother Zephaniah and his family, especially, mm. and the church family. Mm -hmm. Yes. Scourge of COVID in their area, but also in our area, wherever mm. we are, that yeah. you will protect us from this, uh, from COVID and from all dangers, seen and unseen, from sicknesses, from mm. this accidents, from distresses. Mm. Lord, let your hand be around us. That yeah. build a wall of protection around us, and let mm. your it dwell deep in our hearts to give us faith and hope mm. and confidence that mm. you are ours and we are protected by your almighty power. Even yeah. as we depart from one from another from this Zoom meeting, watch mm. over us. Yeah. Guide our footsteps, Holy Spirit, wherever we go, whatever we do, guide our steps. Keep reassuring us of your presence. Keep reassuring us, Lord, that you never leave us. You never forsake us. You are with us even unto the end. So guide us, Heavenly Father, and give us all a week in which we will rejoice in you and come back next week with a mm. testimony of the goodness of the Lord and the grace that you have shed to us. And now may grace, mercy, and peace be multiplied to you from God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank Amen. you again. Thank you for joining Amen. us today. 
God bless you. Yeah. We are good. Blessings, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye. Have a good week. week. You yeah. too. Friday, you too. Have yeah. a good week. Everybody. God bless Bye. you. Yes. Yes, the Lord bless it. Joella, take care. Brian is gone or he's still on? He's on his way home now. Okay. All right. Okay. Y'all take care of that. Bye, everybody. See you, Brian. Bye, Brian. Yep. Be home safe. Yes.